Welcome back to the HTML5 strand here at Apps World. My name is Martin Bryant, I'm Managing Editor at The Next Web and I'm uh, the chair here in this room today. Uh, we've got uh, a packed afternoon of uh, talks uh, based around uh, HTML5 related development uh, issues. Uh, our first talk of the day uh, will be starting in just a moment. Uh, just a, a quick, couple of quick reminders. Uh, Twitter hashtag is uh, Apps World and if you are tweeting about what's happening here, please add HTML5 as well and we'll keep an eye out for what you're talking about. Um, we will be taking some questions at the end of Oren's talk, so if you put your hand up, if you've got a question, just wait for the microphone please, uh, and so then everyone can hear you. And uh, yeah, so our first talk of the afternoon is Oren uh, Fahey, um, a web front-end architect, uh, JavaScript expert and UI consultant, and he is uh, talking about a case study diving into OopJS and architecture using Backbone and Angry Birds. Oren. So. All right, so thank you, thank you all for being here. So a uh, quick survey before I start. Who is here uh, developing in JavaScript or maybe CSS or HTML? Can you raise your hand? All right, pretty much everyone. Cool. So we're going to have an awesome talk today, and it's going to be fun. And just bear with me with all these uh, slides going on, and I promise you we'll enjoy this one. So again, quick introduction. My name is Owen Fahri. I'm a front-end architect and JavaScript engineer at Tikal. Um, I'm doing JavaScript development mostly with uh, Backbone.js. It's an MVC library and uh, we're going to see it uh, later on. Um, this is my website and my Twitter and also uh, my GitHub. So uh, this talk is already, already on uh, GitHub. You can just download this talk and uh, watch the source code and take whatever you want from there. So uh, a few words about the place I'm coming from. Um, Tikal is a leading provider of open source solutions. We have uh, teams such as uh, .NET, Java, Mobile, JavaScript, and we provide uh, software, st software stacks and uh, workshops in uh, almost any field we're, we're uh, developing with. And we, al we also do some uh, subscriptions to software development as well as uh, we have a great community website, stikalkei.com, you should go there. So to start up, JavaScript, uh, as you all know, is a pretty much Wild West uh, language. I mean, um, before uh, two years now from now, um, we didn't have uh, all these technologies and libraries and frameworks to organize our, co our code to be uh, better for uh, maintaining maintaining it and to be flexible enough to add features or remove features. So I was looking for some uh, uh, methods to organize the code so it will be easy to maintain, easy to be uh, add features. And I started looking at uh, Gmail, Twitter, maybe GrooveShark, which is a music player based uh, on the web. Uh, also, LinkedIn Mobile uh, uh, lately uh, done a great job in their uh, uh, web mobile application. So they all use the same common of a single page app application. I mean, there's one gateway where you uh, enter the application and from there you navigate to the various screen of the application. So the basic idea goes like that. We have a certain application controller, which is the green rectangle and it basically manages all the workflow in the application. It manages all the modules that's inside the application. It basically tells them what to do, when to start, and when to stop, 
and how to communicate between each other. So a module is practically the blue rectangle and it can be a location manager, it can be a to-do list, um, if we take a Twitter it can be a, any a list of tweets and each module is supposed to be a self-operable unit. I mean it's self-contained, it doesn't know about any of the other modules and it doesn't supposed to. So it just communicates through events practically through uh, uh, the application controller or some other mediator and this is how it notifies about uh, special events and data that it runs within, itse within itself. I know it's a little bit boring so I think this is a little bit interesting. Is there anybody here who is not familiar with the Angry Birds game? No hands. Oh, you do. Alright. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so um, I'll just be, ta be taking this concept to the Angry Birds game. We're going to see how we're going to develop some of the Angry Birds game using JavaScript, using organization, using MVC framework. So um, to take the uh, previous slide, so if we are to develop the Angry Birds game, we're going to have some an application manager such as the green cloud over here which practically starts the application and starts the, all the various modules. So any module in the application can be the peaks, maybe the birds, the slingshot, maybe ice walls, even the score. And we could have some uh, um, modules which does not have any visual presentation, such as uh, doing some background jobs, uh, um, storage management and, and, and location management, and so on. So. Um, this is practically, practically what we're going to see today in this talk. So without further ado, let's play. So first of all, uh, I want to take you back to the native world of JavaScript. What we used to do if, if we were going to build the red Angry Bird is just starting a, an empty JavaScript file. I call it red Angry Bird JS. And in the past, we used to put some global variables, such as the bird's pro properties, and its color, its name, and its powers. And later on, we, we put some uh, global functions, the global no namespace, and then we just added some uh, event listeners to the DOM, and, sorry, and then we just go with it. I mean, this code works, but we've been there, we don't want to duplicate code and we want to make it better, we want to make it more organized. So, we've come to be a little smaller and we created reusable objects or JavaScript classes. So, I just took a function and defined it as a red Angry Bird. This is how I'm defining a new class in JavaScript. I just put all the global variables inside this constructor of the function. And the next thing I did is took all the global functions and put it inside the prototype object. It means that every, every instance of this red Angry Bird object will have access to these methods. So how do I use it? Simply enough, I'm just creating two birds, for example, the red hat, just creating new red Angry Bird, and I'm also creating the red nose, which is another new Angry Bird. Each one lives on its own but has access to all the methods that we've defined in the prototype um, property. So um, we can use the attack function for example or removing and each one will uh, has access, its own access to these methods and it, it will not have any um, it, will not, it will not have any access to other instances. So just to show you a quick demo of what we've done here. Alright, so created new Angry Birds. And we can just take an Angry Bird and throw it. We can use, we can create as many birds as we like. So this is our reusable object, alright? So this is cool, this is nice. And we want to take the game a step further. So the next bird <coughs> is the blue Angry Bird. Alright, so what I did is I took the, the red Angry Bird class 
and just convert it into a more generic Angry Birds. So I would like to add more colors to my Angry Birds. So I practically just uh, added a, a new color as a property of the Angry Bird and I just uh, added the same methods of the red Angry Birds to the prototype. So again, I'm still using it the same way as I used the red Angry Bird. I'm just creating new Angry Birds. Uh, for instance, I created Twitter as the blue Angry Bird. I just assigned a new color as blue over here. And created Red Hat as a new red Angry Bird. And again, I have the same access to the same functions and methods that I defined in the pro prototype property. So just, again, a quick demo of what we've done here. So again, I have the red Angry Bird. I can throw it around as well. And for the blue Angry Bird, I want to throw it, but its new power is splitting into three little birds, right? So it's supposed to be something like that. All right, so the blue Angry Bird has now a new power. So I wonder how I can do that using reusable object. So let's see that. We now go over uh, JavaScript inheritance, uh, plain JavaScript inheritance. So I'm um, defining a new class in JavaScript, which is the blue Angry Bird. And this is one way of doing inheritance in JavaScript. I'm pointing the prototype property of my blue Angry Bird to inherit the Angry Bird methods and properties. And if I want my constructor of the blue Angry Birds to be run when I'm creating a new instance, I have to fix the, cons the constructor. This is how JavaScript works today. It's not my fault. And then I would like to add the new powers of the blue Angry Bird. So I would like to redefine the ARM method. So simply, I'm just overriding the ARM method in JavaScript. So I'm just re referencing the blue Angry Bird dot pro prototype dot arm, and I'm defining a new code for arming my blue Angry Bird with three little ones. And inside the arm method, I'm referencing a new method, which is the split. It doesn't exist in, in the prototype of the Angry Bird, nor in the red Angry Bird. So I'm just adding, again, a new function to the prototype property. So in this way, when I, when I will arm the blue Angry Bird, it will invoke the split method when I, I will click it, and it will run this function, as simply as that. And just go a little. How do I use it? Simply enough, creating a new instance of the blue Angry Bird giving it some properties and configuration and I just I can just reference the uh, methods of the Angry Birds such as the arm which will invoke again the new arm method and finally we'll go into the split method alright so this was pretty um, um, vanilla JavaScript as uh, we might call it and um, but we got a little bit smarter and we developed an MVC frameworks and libraries, I mean JavaScript world, to be uh, um, better, to be better uh, to use it and extend the code and uh, take all this bo boiler code out of the code and make it more accessible for developers to use it easily. So what? Anyone familiar here with Backbone JS? You can raise your hands. All right. So I I I searched for a, um, a fine acronym for a Backbone and I googled it, and this was the case. Backbone is uh, when used properly keeps one's head out of one's butt. Uh, practically, what I wanted to say here is Backbone gives is an MVC library. Okay, it's implemented in JavaScript. And it gives you um, it gives you a, a well-defined structure to organize the code, organize uh, various areas of um, 
responsibilities in your code to be divided into models, interviews, collections, and whatever you may choose. So we're gonna hope, we're gonna go over to that and we're gonna see how we can develop the red Angry Bird and other birds using Backbone JS. So Backbone model is a class in Backbone which actually uh, wraps a JSON element and it gives you the option to listen to change events and to manage all storage of data inside a JSON object. It means, for example, that I can add some functions and to get values or set values, I have built-in functions such as this.get and this.set. It's pretty simple. And this is how I use it. I'm just creating a new class, a new instance of the red bird model. I'm just giving it here JSON and it will know how to wrap it through the, this function. So if I would like to get the is attacked property, I'm just referencing the sentence. And we're going to see how it can be combined with backbone view, which later I'm going to pass my Angry Bird model into a Red Bird view. So the Red Bird view, Backbone view, is an object that practically wraps an HTML element, and it's what might some call the controller in the classic MVC. I mean, it, could, it controls between um, the event listeners that you put on the DOM, and it's practically uh, communicates between the model and the HTML DOM element. So a quick overview of some of the highlights of Backbone View. This is the way that I'm creating uh, Backbone View. Using the extend method, I don't have to inherit uh, in, a, in a strange way that we saw earlier. So Backbone View has this uh, uh, few magic um, properties. Uh, one of these magic properties is the events object in which I can define any event listener such as click events, mouse down, mouse up, whatever. And as a value I'm just telling it to um, invoke a function that I'm defining right here. So whenever I will click this element it will invoke the attack function. As simple as that. I don't have to write head event listener and do this and do that I'm just defining it here in a minimalist way. The initialize property is actually the constructor function whenever I'm, I will um, uh, create a new instance of this uh, redboard view this function will run and inside this function I have a property called this model. Remember the last slide I just Best this model. So Backbone perfectly puts the model as a first level property of this Backbone view. And in this way, I can listen to change events in the data of my bird model. So whenever I'm changing the data in my model, this render, which is a function inside Redbird view, will invoke in this context. Just as simple as that. I can listen to any change events or any special attributes change events. So this was how we converted our vanilla JavaScript of the Red Angry Bird into using Backbone. So we've seen we already seen the blue angry bird and now we're going to a step further which is the yellow bird and a quick demo of what we want to show okay so uh, we have the red angry bird which is working fine and we have the blue bird as well which is also working fine and we want to have a new bird which is the yellow bird so let's see how we can extend with Backbone and do some inheritance and adding new properties and maybe even the dependencies in JavaScript. So 
first of all, um, Backbone uses a, a, a utility library which is called underscore JS, and underscore gives us the possibility to compile text or HTML5 templates and just pass it through uh, JSON data and finally get uh, an HTML string. And in this template, I just it's, it's an HTML snippet, and all these uh, um, JSP or SP like uh, variables is just a way of defining dynamic variables, which will then I will use I will use it in this way. Okay, this is a, a JSON with all the variables that are declared inside the HTML, and practically with underscore I'm using the template method over here. And I'm passing it the um, JSON data and my string of the HTML. And I will get here a new string with all the data that I defined here, which will be uh, combined in the HTML. So now I will pop up into uh, uh, doing uh, dependency management in JavaScript using require.js. Anybody here heard about require.js? All right, great. So require.js gives us the possibility to, uh, to do dependency management. I mean, we don't have to organize our uh, calls for the JavaScript and organize all, all the files. We can just create a new array of uh, the paths to uh, the JavaScript elements and require.js will uh, magically load them and uh, we'll have a callback function here and each argument is an instance or a reference to any module this is a JavaScript file that goes here so with, require, with the require function we're beginning the, uh, the use of a JavaScript application that uses require.js and similarly, we have the define method, which is a way of require.js to say, look, I'm defining a module, and I want you to load it, and then run whatever goes here. So it's the same syntax. I'm just defining a new module. I'm giving it its array of dependencies. These are all paths, again, to files, jQuery, Backbone, Angry Birds, JS. And this function, which is the callback, we run when all of these have been loaded. So, um, one, one point that I would like to emphasize is if you define a module in uh, require.js using the define method, you have to return an object if you want to um, uh, work with it. And we'll see that in a moment. So, um, if I will build my uh, yellow bird using backbone.js and require.js, I will define my uh, Angry Birds. It will have th these dependencies files. I want to use jQuery, underscore, backbone, and the HTML templates that we saw before. And this is the callback. When all of these have been loaded to the JavaScript scope, this function will run, and I will have access to these properties. And here, I'm defining my new Angry Bird. And you can see that I have access to Backbone, which is here. And I'm creating a new view, and I can define any methods. And finally, I'm returning my bird as a reusable object so I can create new instances of it. All right. So, the yellow bird. So, I created a new module of my Angry Bird view, and I would like to use it here. So I'm defining my yellowbirdview.js and these are all the dependencies that I want to load. It's jQuery again, underscore backbone, the angrybirdview.js and again the HTML template. And this is a way in JavaScript to define private variable. I will return to it in a moment and we'll see why this is a private variable. On this line, I'm defining my yellow bird. So, again, I'm referencing the Angry Bird object. And because this is a uh, backbone view, it has the extend method, which allows me to inherit all its methods and add some new. 
or override it. So uh, my yellow board uh, will have new powers. So again, I'm overriding the arm function over here. It will do some stuff. And I think that the yellow board is supposed to fly fast. This is one of its powers. So I'm defining a new method, which is fly fast. And I'm referencing the bird speed variable, which I've defined outside of this function. So this is how we define private vi variables in JavaScript. I'll show you in a minute what it means. If I'm going to use the yellow Angry Birds, all right. So I'm creating a new bird, and I can um, add, I can uh, invoke the fly fast method, and but I can't reference the bird speed, which is a private var variable. This is just JavaScript. So um, I don't have any. Um, I have five minutes. Yeah. Um, so how are we going to um, manage the um, manage all all, all of this? Um. All right. So this is the game controller. Okay. So it manages the application. It manages all the birds and the modules. So how we can define it? We can simply use it as uh, um, passing it as a uh, instance. All right. And we can just uh, do use game controller dot on this is how we're listening to up to various um, um, events and we can trigger events to the game controller i mean the bird uh, is not defined on events such as bird success hit and the other birds can listen it so the game controller is practically a background view and you have the trigger and the on methods right built in inside and all these modules are uh, such as the game manager or game router or any other modules are uh, constructed and referenced here so uh, to sum up um, I uh, advise you to uh, build your JavaScript application and communicate using events all right so um, you can um, divide your modules divide all the uh, areas of responsibilities using uh, uh, some MVC framework such as uh, um, maybe Backbone or Ember.js or Angular of Google and just make it sure you have the control in, in, in one place and if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer Thank you very much. Um, Oren, um, do we have any questions? Are you asking for the first slide to be shown again? Yeah. <laughs> this is a good way of... Um, this is a quite an interesting uh, way of presenting your, your talk. Uh, does, your, does your day job have anything to do at all with Angry Birds? Uh, no, no. <laughs> it was just a use case to to show the concept of uh, of using uh, MVC frameworks. Cool. Uh, uh, tell us a bit about what you get up to um, in your in your uh, everyday work. Well, um, I'm doing uh, mostly um, JavaScript consulting. Okay. And um, I'm consulting of how to use uh, MVC frameworks, how to uh, design uh, an ecosystem for JavaScript, and that's practically. Of what I'm doing. Okay, um, so we need to get that first slide up again, and then uh, yeah. uh, this, oh, oh, this one, that one. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well, thank you very much, um, Oren Fahey. Thank you. Do we have our next speaker here, Ben Kennedy? Yes. Well timed. Well timed entrance. Hello. Hi. Um, so uh, Ben. Um, uh, is just going to set up. Um, uh, we'll get you set up here. That was well timed, but uh, so um, Ben is um, a software engineer uh, with the Web Technologies Group at Motorola Solutions. He's going to be giving us a scalable vector graphics demo. So. Uh,
just getting him set up for that. Um, a little later on this afternoon, we will be joined by Jim Cresswell, a uh, web app developer at FT Labs. I talk about bringing the um, FT web app to emerging platforms. He'll be with us in half an hour's time. Uh, then we have a coffee break. Uh, and uh, following that, uh, how HTML5 guys survive in native app land, uh, which sounds quite interesting. And then at uh, 3.50, to round off today's uh, talks here in the HTML5 room, um, we will be hearing from Tommy Mains, who is one of the uh, uh, contributors to one of our panels this morning. So uh, Ben is just getting himself set up. Can of course uh, tweet about all of this uh, uh, using the hashtag AppsWorld, uh, which we can catch all of what you're saying about it. Uh, stick in HTML5 in there as well. Uh, one of the most popular tweets, in fact, the most popular tweet from this room today.